Take a moment right here Feeling like a sound gear Running, running Yo, man, listen here. I can't believe we are starting off this chapter the way we're starting it off at. We're kind of crazy. Chapter 1056 has officially dropped on Viz Media, so let's get into it. This chapter is already 10 out of 10 because Katakuri is featured on the cup story. Do you know how long we have not seen Katakuri? I'm counting the days, the months, the minutes, the seconds. That Katakuri is not in the main verse yet. So we start off the chapter with Kingdom and basically telling, please forgive me, forgive me to the other scabbers. Now we've seen Raizo and Shinobu, how they got sucked out dry from Green Bull. Now I really don't know what they actually did to recuperate. By the same time, Green Bull Devil Fruit is amazing. I'm pretty sure once his opponents get enough H2O, enough water inside their system, they'll get breathed back juvenated. This is not confirmed in the manga, but definitely later on we do see Shinobu looking really, really good. But aside from that, we finally get confirmation that <laughs> Kinemon finally seen his wife Suru. Now you know that Kinemon did not want to meet Suru during the raid, during the battle. He wanted to meet her after things was hashed out. Oh boy, we got more to come. Get this right, Neku and Inu called Carrot over to the capital just to tell her they want her, Carrot, to be the next king of Zo. Mainly because Inu and Neku are gonna be on Wano for the remaining times to be the scabbers of Momonosuke. Mind you, there are about 10 different other animals, 10 different other minks that probably fit the position way more than Carrot. But let me tell you why I'm okay with this. We are ushering this new era. Now with this new era, family and friends means power. Now you know Carrot is part of this new era with Luffy, Eustace, and Law, and family means everything. Alliance means everything. You've seen how Kaido and Big Mom went down by alliances. A great alliances that can compete with the big power names in this world. Longest Carrot is a part of this new world, this new era, this golden age of piracy, the next level golden age of piracy. The Zoe will be okay. If Carrot calls on Law or Luffy to come through, they definitely gonna come through. And it will be a massive break if Luffy come through. And if any enemy that wanna breach Zoe, they gotta see Luffy. And we all know as One Piece fans, you know how that's gonna end up. And not to mention, Momo need all the help that people will provide him. Because at the end of the day, Green Bull was right. The only reason why he showed up is because Kaido was gone. Big Mom and his company was gone. He needs a strong force to help him to protect Wano. And hopefully, the Skyros will be enough. But only time will tell when it comes to that point. Wano is in big trouble if they cannot defend against an Admiral level Marine force. So in the future, I'd like to see what Wano can actually do defend against these high power enemies. And finally, we get to see Sukuyaki build up enough courage to confront his grandson and his granddaughter, Momo and Hiyuri. I know it took a whole lot of courage from Sukiyaki because it could have went another way than what Paza way went just now. He could have been exiled, even put to death, because of his role. Like he didn't do enough in my eyes to keep Odin alive. We can sit here and make up so many excuses for Sukiyaki, but at the same time, he's a warrior. He's a samurai of Wano. He got so much discouraged inside his mind that he knows he's probably wrong. If you ask me, even if he was poisoned, like what type of samurai let their guard down around people? That's Sukiyaki fault on his own end. Not nobody else, but at the same time, I don't think Hayuri and Momo would carry on in the future to feel some type of ill will against their grandfather. Even with Tsukiyaki dialogue, basically telling him that he only here to teach, that's it, and want to go back into seclusion. Like, that telling him he still seems like discouraged and he still feel bad at what happened to Odin 20 years ago. But his teaching is a must need for Momo to mature and be the best Wano warrior. Ever. Now we have to move on to Robin telling everybody Pluton is in Wano. Even Frankie mentioned to Luffy, do you want to use it? Now you know Luffy ain't with the gimmicks. Luffy's a one power man himself. So I wouldn't feel it right even for Luffy to utilize Pluton. But I'm puzzled just like the rest of you watchers. Why would Odin want to utilize Pluton so much? What do he know that we don't know? During Laughter, we know that everybody on Roger's ship seen what might happen coming forth in the future. What would happen so bad to Wano or to somebody else? In my opinion, it may be Wano. In my opinion, 
what what happened to it so much that they would have to utilize Pluton? If Wano is an immense danger, maybe that was on Laftail. Maybe the information on Laftail was said that, and that's why Odin basically want the borders of Wano to open. For Pluton can protect it for the rest of his days. Maybe that's a must need for Wano at this time. Like you just said at the end of this chapter, things are changing. People are in for the kill from now on not. This world's in chaos. So Pluton maybe is a must need for Wano. And a little bit of side note, I love to see Toma looking very healthy and looking more motivated to be in the Kenochi. Like we all seen Toma in the beginning of this art of Wano and see how nimble she is. And right here in this panel, she looks so much strong and motivated to be the best ninja she can be. And I'm pretty much eager to find out what is Karibu intention. What does he have going on in his mind? Like who he's going to tell about Pluton? He already know about Poseidon. He already know about the ancient weapons. Now he's going to tell somebody about Pluton. What is his real goal and why he came to Wano is in my impression in my mind. Like, what if he working alongside somebody else and hid that from Luffy in his game? We have to keep our eyes on Caribou. Like, we have to see him, even if he's in a cover store, we have to see what he has going on. If he's going to tell a certain somebody, that means they have probably bad tensions or ill will against Luffy and his alliance. But after this, we have to fast forward to a few days. Now, we've seen Momo looking around for some of the straw hats, but it can't be found. But what tripped my eyes and my mind is when... Momo asked Zoro to teach him more techniques, but Zoro wasn't there. If you guys understand that maybe Momo move set will be based around Zoro moves, but with Odin's will. This is more character development for Momo Nosuke. This is what he needs. You know, can we see Momo really utilizing Ushera? Like, bro, that would be amazing. What about a 1500 pound Phoenix cannon? Like anything like that? Bro, Momo will be amazing, a top tier samurai in Wano, much needed. But we gotta fast forward to use this law and kid. And in these panels, I'm thinking like, bro, think about this for a second. Luffy finally acknowledging that he's an emperor, right? We came a long way. Luffy's an emperor now. Nah. It's kind of hard to see all these new pirates, this good alliance, Luffy, law and kid to depart somewhere else to different islands, you know? Seems like Law and Kid, it was just yesterday when it was introduced to the new world, right? These three big captains did a huge thing in this new era. Nobody's seen coming. I mean, we definitely would see it. But at the same time, to use it, to utilize it, to see it page by page, manga to manga, chapter to chapter, the growth between all three of these supernovas is amazing. All three of these powerhouse captains are leaving Wano with the same bounty. 3 billion berry bounty. I can't wait to see when they meet up for the final battle. See how far they came. And to see if they all have different type of bounties now. And the only way Law or Eustace will be a Yonko is either Shanks or Buggy go down. Mind you, I don't see Shanks going down anytime soon. Neither is Buggy. His campaign is a powerhouse campaign. This cross guild with Buggy, Mihawk, and Croc is an amazing feat for Buggy, bro. This is the immense power that Buggy has. Mind you, I don't mean physically. I mean headline power. The authority power. Bro, you can't tell me Buggy's not the man right now. Buggy's the who's who right now. The power to pit bounties on Marines' head. Bro, the Marines looking weak. Even after the reverie, look how the Marines look. They look like regular people now that can be defeated. People that can be tried. Like, that's bad for the Marines. I've been saying this for a while now. The SSG initiative going to be this much powerful. Just because the Marines have a target on their back. Just because the Marines look weak right now. The SSG will prove to be immense. And it will prove to have people. Like these power people. These are power pirates. In this One Piece verse. They're going to have to be checked. They're going to have to be in line because the SSG initiative will be an amazing feat for the Marines. And it's a must need. And I can see why Croc and Mihawk went up on the buggy. Right now, he's the man who's need to be the man. He's A1 right now, but buggy ain't playing no more. Buggy taking it real serious. At the same time, he can protect Mihawk and Croc with his influence. And I have to give it up to Traffy, bro. Traffy Law gave uses and Killer. The Royal Poneglyph rubbing from Kaido. But it's going to be an equal match. Killer basically said it's going to be an all-out war now. Because it seems like all these pirates are going to be destined to come to this one location for an all-out battle. 
for Laugh Tale to find One Piece. We're going to see Luffy, Law, Eustace really battle out for charge to get One Piece. An amazing feat for all three. So once we meet up again, we're going to see an overpowering Eustace, overpowering Law to beat Luffy and his gang. When they meet up, there's no other way unless it's a final alliance to beat the big person where they all can go all out. And since we speaking on Killer, Killer said some important things just now. Killer and Eustace went to Big Mom territory to get the rubbings off one of her command. Mind you, I don't think he got off on Cracker. I'm pretty sure he didn't get off Smoothie. And I damn sure know he didn't get off Katakuri. So I'm pretty sure that Eustace fought off against Snack and Yerouge came to beat off Snack. And that's why Big Mom demoted Snack from a sweet commander. Because those two L's that Snack took, I would've did the same thing I was Big Mom. So in my opinion, I think that's why Snacks finally got left off. Because of those two losses that Big Mom took. The name of Big Mom took because of Snack. And not to mention this big reveal of this man with the burning mark. I try to look over every obstacle. I try to look over anybody in the Roger Pirates that had a scar, a burning scar because of... Maybe someone in Roger's pirate crew that would know how to get to the next rogue pony glyph. But I couldn't see nobody other than Douglas Bullet. Douglas Bullet had this huge scar, like a burnt scar on itself. Mind you, Douglas Bullet was confirmed to be non canon. But you know, Odin's editors, they could always bring somebody back to be canon. And mind you, Trafalgar and Robin had it on their face like maybe they know who it is. Mind you, Robin is an archaeologist, so she might have a pretty good impression of maybe she know who it is. That would put Luffy crew at the same pace as Eustace in law, but only time would tell. And I can't wait to see the next island that us straw hat are gonna get into. And now we leave out the chapter with Yamoto. Yamoto definitely wants to join. Mind you, I'm okay with Yamoto staying because one don't need an extra warrior. But I'm also good about Yamoto joining Luffy crew like we already have Jinbei now we get Yamoto another monster that would be an amazing feat for Luffy and that's something that he do need to go forth and battling Blackbeard or even Shanks Luffy needs a strong crew because those two Yonko are powerhouse and they got people along their side that can beat Luffy's crew just like this this chapter was good this chapter was amazing 10 out of 10 in my perspective we are on break next week, I heard. By the same time, all the key dropping this fire every week. Let's give him a break. But that is it for me, fam. Hope you like the chapter. Like, comment, subscribe to get more of me and more One Piece content. Look out for my Face Off episode 2 because it's coming soon. Trust and believe. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep yourself in the loop of what's going on with me and my daily life. And like always, stay safe. I'm Shifer, and I'm out.